Welcome back. Gauteng Economic Development MEC Lebogang Maile says his department will spend around 50 million rand to continue refurbishing old township industrial parks across the province. Maile has tabled his 1.4 billion rand budget in the Gauteng legislature. Over 40 million rand was spent in the last financial year to refurbish eight dilapidated industrial parks. Maile says the provincial government is trying to create a conducive environment for small businesses to operate. He now joins us live in studio. NEC, thank you so much for joining us. Now, the 1.4 billion rand budget allocation, does the amount meet the requirements? <coughs> uh, evening, and thanks for having me. I think um, if you look at the 1.4 billion, <coughs> you must look at it as a, what I'll call a facilitative budget, because mm -hmm. economic development, it's not the responsibility of the department only. We facilitate, we coordinate, mm -hmm. and um, um, ensure that there's collaboration, mm -hmm. firstly within government departments, different spheres, and the private sector. So it must be looked in that context. Uh, other embassies will be tabling budgets which will be speaking to other economic imperatives um, like uh, infrastructure, transport, um, ICT, and all that. So if you say is it um, sufficient or not, it will never be uh, 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 sufficient because there are a lot of uh, competing priorities. But I think the question we must ask is um, uh, do we have the capacity to spend it wisely and effectively and invest in areas that matter which will make a dent and a difference in the lives of uh, our people. And do we have that capacity? We definitely have because if you look at the administrative capacity, uh, the Department of Economic Development, uh, we've picked up in terms of bringing the skills and all that, but also um, th there is uh, prudential, uh, a prudent financial management. I mean, they've had uh, clean audits in the last uh, three years, uh, which shows that the, uh, the department uh, is, doing, is doing well in terms of managing uh, the public uh, resources. Now, recently uh, there's data that shows that, uh, which was released, that South Africa's economy contracted by about 0.7%. Now, this is in the first quarter of 2017. How much of that knock did uh, Gauteng as a province take? Well, look, you might not be able to quantify some of the uh, uh, of the of the the effect yes, now, the effects, mm -hmm. but uh, I think the, the the impact it's 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 negative, and it will take us. Um, a considerable time to to recover because you know how thing is um, uh, contributing about 35 percent in the GDP and the economy is uh, more than 1.3 trillion rands. I mean, uh, it's big. Uh, contributes 42 percent into the total industrial output. More than 40 percent of unemployed people are here. Mm -hmm. So y you can't take it light. But we're not looking at it as a Houting province because we are not an island. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we are mm -hmm. worried about what is happening in the South Africa's mm -hmm. economy mm -hmm. uh, because whatever happens in the South Africa's economy affects us uh, as a province. And that is why we must work with national government um, as a custodian of um, macroeconomic policy to ensure that we play our part, we collaborate, and ensure that uh, they also play their role in ensuring that uh, conducive uh, conditions are, are created. And I'm glad that uh, uh, there is a sense of uh, seriousness and agency now to try and turn th th things around. Now, let's just look at uh, the Gauteng province as, as a whole. Um, we're currently sitting uh, as Gauteng at uh, um, close to 3 million unemployed youth, um, if that figure is correct. Do we have, does the Gauteng province have a proper sustainable plan to deal with this challenge? It's about 2.7 million. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's 2.7 or 3 million, 3 million it's, it's yes. huge by any measure. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should play with the numbers. Uh, we should rather um, look at the question you are asking, and that's an important question. And I think the, the first thing is that if you want to deal with unemployment and youth unemployment, you must look at the whole economy, 
um, um, the structure of our economy because I think that's where the problem is. And that's why through our economic development plan, we're looking at different sectors mm -hmm. so that we can intervene systematically. And we want to firstly save jobs and create jobs. But of significant, we've got a targeted program towards young people, which is called TEPO 1 million. Through that program, we want to um, uh, create hope amongst young people. Mm -hmm. We want to touch the lives of at least uh, 1 million young people by 2019. We launched the program initially at several 500,000 in 2014. By last year, we had already touched the lives of uh, about 350,000 young people. And we, we realized that there's a huge potential. Mm -hmm. But because of the magnitude of the problem, we have to upscale our interventions. And what is uh, special about this program is not your um, uh, typical uh, program that is only reliant on government. Mm -hmm. I mean, already we've got close to 30 big companies like your Coca-Cola, your Hollard, uh, your IBMs that have said we will uh, employ a certain number of young people, mm -hmm. we will impart skills in them, we will give them business, and that is what makes Sebo 1 million mm -hmm. special and a very important uh, program to help us deal with youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. And we're very uh, grateful to those uh, private sector partners who have come to the party. And we want to edge more because if we don't deal with the issue mm -hmm. of youth unemployment, we will not be able to deal with other sketches that we see. Mm -hmm. I mean, the abuse of women, uh, of children, mm -hmm. The crime, crime violence, uh, violence and mm -hmm. uh, abuse of, sem uh, of substances and all that. Mm -hmm. So we want uh, the, the big uh, businesses to really come to the party. Uh, we are already um, seeing all government departments and in all our programs, um, we will be able to say in terms of programs, how much is dedicated to young people. And of course, not just young people. We are also looking at women. We're looking at people with disabilities. We're looking at uh, military veterans. But there is a specific uh, focus because of uh, the huge numbers uh, mm -hmm. involved and the fact that this is becoming a ticking time bomb. Mm -hmm. And if we want to um, deal with the, um, uh, the, the future of, of, of our country to secure it, we must make sure that young people are given opportunities because in that uh, 2.7 million plus what it means is that they are not in learning uh, institutions mm -hmm. uh, they are sitting somewhere in, um, in corners in townships they are despondent um, they are uninspired um, they've lost hope and, and, and some of them are, are in jails, mm -hmm. and that's why we must uh, intervene. I was just going to ask you there as well, the fact that these companies that have come on board and are saying that they will, um, they're willing to take the youth on board and to skill them and to empower them and employ them, what sort of criteria are they going to be using for the youth to um, come forward and say, okay, um, we've identified so and so we want them to come through these are the skills that we're looking at or these are the character traits that we're looking at what sort of uh, criteria is going to be used on this we're working with a company called harambe and we've created a, a portal where we want the young people because we want to be able to monitor this where young people will be uh, registered mm -hmm. and will not just because we know uh, there are young people who don't have access to internet, internet to computers. Yes. Mm -hmm. we will have uh, road shows where we go to different parts of our province to get these young people mm -hmm. so that uh, if for instance IBA, IBM says uh, um, like Microsoft mm -hmm. says between now and 2019 mm -hmm. we are going to train 1 million young people on just basic skills how mm -hmm. to use computer how to use internet and all that you, you, you might think that's not important but um, if you want to know what is happening in the world you want to network you want to do mm. business if you don't have those basic skills mm. it becomes a uh, difficult so those one million young people we will find them some of them are already in the system in mm -hmm. the schools mm. in um, tertiary institutions so we, we don't just look at only those that uh, are out of the system mm. but we also have uh, programs for those that are in the system because remember uh, there will be a significant number of young people at the end of this year who are going to join the ranks mm. of the unemployed once they graduate, whether as matriculants or as um, 
um, university graduates. So we will have to have a, 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 a comprehensive uh, um, uh, approach that is also uh, forward looking. But mm -hmm. it's not an easy um, um, uh, uh, task, it's a very complex uh, mm -hmm. task. The economy is not doing well, we've been downgraded, it's shrinking because this technical recession means the economy is shrinking. Shrinks, so as it shrinks, uh, the issue is how do you grow it and create this opportunity so mm -hmm. it's a very difficult task uh, mm -hmm. but it will need all of us that uh, um, it, it, it begs for a common response of mm -hmm. all of us and i don't think it's in, insurmountable now mec let's let's move now to um we touched on uh, access to the internet and small businesses uh, in terms of access to the internet uh, gauteng is preparing a major broadband uh, rollout now do we have time frames and which areas are going to be um, the first to get uh, you know the, the the broadband and how is the, how is this going to work I think the MEC of EU government, uh, MEC Papa Chrissy, will be presenting the budget because we've got the department called e government, mm. e government. But we've made a commitment that at least by 2020, uh, all the different parts of Gauteng should be covered, and all the citizens of Gauteng should be having uh, uh, free access uh, mm -hmm. to 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 Wi-Fi, wi-fi and internet. Mm -hmm. So we have already started the rollout. For instance. Uh, some of these industrial parks you are referring to mm. are going to be connected because there's no point of giving people space to conduct economic activities but they, they are not connected, mm. there's no water, there's no electricity. So that's why when we look at those industrial parks, we don't just look at them um, in isolation from the um, what we'll call economic infrastructure. Our mm. approach is uh, comprehensive. Mm. Now, looking at uh, the Gauteng province between 2014 and 2016, um, the province attracted about 66 million, billion, uh, sorry, billion yes. worth of foreign direct investment. Are we still sitting in the same ballpark or <laughs> have figures changed? Well, we will, we will assess because what is good about these numbers, it's not us sitting and deciding that these are the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, 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 a, there's private institutions like NSN and Young, I think, mm -hmm. is doing. So we will be waiting for some of those reports um, and we are hopeful that um, uh, investors will continue coming. We have not been sitting uh, on our laurels. We have been going to different parts of the continent with the Premier. Mm. In the last three weeks, we have been to Ghana and to Nigeria. And I can tell you, um, most African countries are looking up to us. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them want us to succeed. And mm -hmm. most of them want uh, us to uh, deal decisively and uh, in a matured way with the challenges and problems because they understand the significance of this economy. In uh, September, the uh, governor of Lagos will be coming to visit us here with a business delegation. Mm -hmm. So we are doing a lot of things, not just in Africa, of mm -hmm. course, but we think it's high time that we also focus in Africa because Africa, intra-Africa trade mm -hmm. um, is sitting at about between 12 and 14 percent. So mm -hmm. it means we're not doing business amongst ourselves mm -hmm. as African enough. Mm -hmm. um, we, have to, we have to explore. And there are reasons why. One of the reasons is uh, lack of infrastructure, you know, some of the political problems we have in other parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it makes things uh, a bit difficult um, and policy uncertainty in certain areas and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. But we, we decided that we want to uh, aggressively uh, pursue the agenda of uh, Africa's industrial revolution and mm -hmm. we have been um, receiving positive response and of course we are talking to even local uh, investors by mm -hmm. the way it's not mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are taking money here and invest in other areas so mm -hmm. you have to convince them that even uh, um, um, investing in the country is mm. still uh, the, the right thing to do and they will ask a whole range of questions because there are a number of challenges. That is why we have what we call industrial action labs mm -hmm. where we engage with industry and they raise whatever issues they face, whether it's compliance, regulatory issue, whatever um, uh, frustrations they have and we find a way of solving. But we've also been able uh, since 2014 visited firms and I think this is significant because mm -hmm. we're not sitting in our boardrooms and meeting with big business uh, leaders without understanding 
how are the operations what are the uh, 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 daily experiences mm. and problems for instance there's one company um had a problem with the road that links them from uh, their firm to the main road and all that we had to say how do we get the municipality to intervene so to someone it's not a big issue because this is a multi-billion rent company mm -hmm. uh, and if you don't help them they can easily close down and leave mm -hmm. or business might not be uh, doing well and all that so we're looking at all um, um, uh, uh, sorts of things. I mean, we've been to companies like Acelu Metal, mm -hmm. Score Metals, and we are want to make sure that whatever we do, um, we 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 work very closely, and and we understand uh, the different industries. But industries must also feel that they are close to us, and we are not far uh, from each other, mm -hmm. and that. Uh, we are accessible and they can raise whatever issues uh, that they have with government, whether comfortable or not. Mm. Uh, and we have also been engaging um, tertiary institutions um, in, in the province, um, uh, both private and public um, research <coughs> institutions. And that has been able, uh, that, that has been helpful because mm. it gives us an insight to understand the nature, the character and the structure of the economy mm. that we are presiding uh, over. No. Speaking of, of the economy and uh, a lot of work that uh, you, you're doing in terms of dealing with uh, big business and uh, industrial companies um, and coming to the table as one working together, small business, um, you announced a move to integrate about 100 uh, billion rands into township economy. Is business accepting and you know coming forth with regards to um, small business <coughs> ownership in terms of black business ownership and uh, entrepreneurship are they assisting uh, well firstly the, this hundred billion we're talking about is what the township economies are worth uh, in our in our in our province and mm. this is a study that was done by world bank i think it's probably worth more now because it was done i think uh, a few years back mm -hmm. and the point we are raising is that we, we, we have this uh, significant amount which does not circulate in the townships. Mm. We've got big business that goes into the townships and, 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 and there's nothing wrong. That's why we're talking about the integration. integration. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the big business goes to townships, but they don't empower and work with township-based uh, 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 entrepreneurs, whether in terms of uh, partnership, in terms of uh, procurement, in terms of uh, production, in terms of management structure of their companies and all that. So we want to make sure that when we look at uh, all the different va variables, mm -hmm. big business comes to the party. We are coming to the party big time because in 2014, when we came into office, mm -hmm. we were spending about between 600 and 800 million on township-based entrepreneurs. As I speak to you now, we are spending more than six billion as Gauteng Provincial Government. Mm -hmm. We have said at least 30% of our budget by 2019 must be going to township-based uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. The six billion is still not enough. We want to increase it. When we came into office, we had about 1,600 um, uh, township-based uh, businesses in mm -hmm. our database. Mm -hmm. Some government officials were saying we are not able to give township businesses uh, work because we can't find them. They are not on our database. We said we must go out and find them. Mm -hmm. Find them. We launched a campaign called Kondisa Ishishinilako. Mm -hmm. And as I speak to you now, we've got about 7,000 on our database. Mm -hmm. And we want to increase it because we want to uh, mm -hmm. formalize more and more of those township uh, enterpri uh, entrepreneurs and enterprises. Uh, but we also want to ensure <coughs> that we, we become a, a biggest uh, authority that is uh, reliable mm -hmm. when it comes to um, a data for township economy because some of the big businesses are saying to us we want to work with the township entrepreneurs mm -hmm. but we can't find them and in certain instances their quality is not good and all that mm -hmm. so we can go on to prove that we've got these businesses but we also have businesses that can provide quality that is why we introduced the uh, township entrepreneurship awards if you look mm -hmm. at the quality of those awards the quality of the enterprises and entrepreneurs who come in there and you go and visit 
uh, the, the different uh, areas they work at, you realize that there's huge potential which requires government and big business to work together because township economy um, uh, revitalization mm -hmm. should not be seen as a threat mm -hmm. to big business, but it must be seen as an opportunity uh, to start ensuring that we facilitate the, the integration of the overwhelming majority mm -hmm. into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it should be seen as an opportunity for them to contribute towards reducing in inequality. Mm -hmm. It must be seen as an opportunity to uh, facilitate entrance of new players into the into the into the mainstream economy mm. now just speaking of uh, of uh, entrepreneurs in in the townships and small businesses and the big business that are in the townships currently we've seen incidents where there was a lot of uh, uh, you know sort of uh, a bit of a ruckus in terms of um, township entrepreneurs complaining that big business wasn't really doing much to empower them. How are you going to work around this and how, what exactly are you planning to do? Maybe just uh, give us a, a bit of uh, what was discussed at uh, some of the, the um, conferences that you had with uh, entrepreneurs and uh, big business. Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, small businesses mm. are not happy. Mm. You know, when you run a business and you don't make money, um, you obviously not going to be happy mm. or, or when you register a company and you, you don't have market mm -hmm. you don't have money to start so they are not just blaming big business mm -hmm. uh, even despite the fact that we're spending six billion we've got seven million i mean seven thousand of them they, they still feel you're not, doing, still enough. Feel we're not yes. doing enough and all that mm -hmm. which is fine because <laughs> we are a government we must always be put under pressure and we, we, we don't mind. I mean, that's uh, we're not doing them a favor. It's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, they are our employers at the end of the day. We'll continuously engage them, understand what is it that they're saying we're not doing right, mm -hmm. and what is it that they think we can do differently. And that is what we want, especially with entrepreneurs, to be innovative and say to us, why don't you do this thing this way? Oh, I've got this company, and this is how I'm doing things. How can you help me and all that? Not mm -hmm. people who are sitting and waiting for government and complaining and saying you're not doing anything. <laughs> we are not uh, um, uh, uh, allergic to constructive uh, uh, criticism. We take mm -hmm. it and that is why through our Tirisano uh, program, which mm -hmm. is working together led by the Premier, we have been to all the regions of Gauteng, mm -hmm. I think to more than 66 uh, uh, communities. We will be going back to those communities to report mm -hmm. because we said to them, what are your problems? They told us, we said we'll respond to them. And we said to them, where we can't uh, um, 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 fix things immediately, they will still tell you. Mm -hmm. We will not uh, uh, lie to you and all that because this is indeed about working together. So we, 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 we will continue engaging with the big business. Like I said, some of yeah. them have come to the party big time. I mean, mm -hmm. companies like your Sun International, if you look at how they are empowering our entrepreneurs through their uh, uh, enterprise development program, their mm -hmm. participation in our uh, township uh, economy, I mean, uh, entrepreneurship, our company like NetBank, mm -hmm. uh, including media houses, by the way. And, and I think we would want SABC to come to the party as well. If you look at the, your mail and guardians, your mm -hmm. independent newspapers, they've mm -hmm. come to the party mm -hmm. uh, to say we support this business. Even with SEPO 1 million, you have had uh, a media uh, people saying for the first time we're not just going to give you coverage mm. uh, we're not just going to give you a time give us young people who want to employ them mm. we also have value chain bring them we are going to give them skills we are going to give them business and 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 this is what is inspiring and mm. encouraging and it gives us hope that we will exceed this one million when you get all different sectors of society agreeing that this has become a crisis mm. and it requires everybody. We can have differences about how the economy has been managed, mm. how, who and who were captured and all those issues. Mm. But on these issues of national interest, uh, like uh, unemployment of young people, growing the economy, we should all work together to ensure that uh, we succeed. Because if things don't work, we all uh, stand to lose. It's not uh, this government or that party mm. that is, uh, is going to lose. It's all South Africans. And the consequences are dire. And they will take a long time to, to reverse. And that is the message we are conveying 
to all the different sectors mm -hmm. of our uh, society in Gauden to say work with us. MEC, unfortunately we have run out of time. We'll have to leave it there for Thank now. Thank you very you so much. much. Thank you very us. much for your time. And that was Gauteng MEC for Economic Development, Agriculture, Environment and Rural Development, Lebohang Maile, joining us in studio.